Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are taking a look at Azure Functions. And this is a function as a service, FAST, offering uh, that allows developers to focus on writing code and not worry about maintaining the underlying computing infrastructure. And so here is our uh, visualization. So we can kind of break down the anatomy of how Azure Functions work. So the first thing you'll need is an, a function app, and this defines the underlying compute for a collection of functions. So a function app defines the hosting, runtime, and global configurations. Then you have the functions themselves. And these represent code along with application runtime configurations. So the idea is you can say, I want this to be a Python function, a .NET function, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's always gonna be a trigger. So a trigger is the chosen event data that will cause uh, the function to execute. And you can only have one trigger you have input bindings. These are one or more multiple data sources that will be passed to the function when a trigger occurs. So the idea is you can pull in data from a variety of different Azure services at the time of trigger, which is uh, quite nice. Um, and then you have the output bindings. These are one or more uh, data syncs uh, that will receive output of data from the function on successful execution. They say syncs, you could say consumers if you like. Um, and also Azure Functions, at least as of today, has four different versions. You really do want to just use the latest version. Uh, there could be a version five out by now, I don't know. Um, but you know, just be aware that you're always using the latest version, but uh, in practicality, you probably won't be able to tell the difference between the versions, but just make sure you're using the latest, okay?